Perfect. So it sounds like, because what I'm always telling students is you, it is a fundamental skill to learn how to draw by hand and really learn that, how to see what's really in front of you, work with the right brain versus the left brain knowledge, that that's a foundation that even though you're going to end up working on the computer a lot, and maybe mostly, that it's still a foundational skill to learn how to draw. So some students are really worried or concerned, how important is it really? Do I really have to be such a master at life drawing? Let me say this to you, students. <laughs> students that have this question, drawing is a language. If you're going to live in France, you got to speak French. If you're going to live in China, you got to speak Chinese. If you're going to live in the film and animation world, you got to visually speak. You need to understand how to communicate. Doesn't mean you're going to go off and draw for the rest of your life, but when you're trying to tell somebody what your idea is and you can't draw it on paper, I can say, oh, it's a guy and he's walking, he's whistling, and you're like, I think I see that. But the minute I draw it, you go, that's it. You gotta be able to communicate visually and you gotta give yourself enough time. It takes at least four years. It took me about 10 before I was like good, before I wasn't embarrassed to show people my drawings. You gotta invest, it's true. You gotta invest the time. You gotta recognize the value. Even though I knew I was good. The, the funny thing is, is my drawings weren't the best, but the minute I started doing computer animation, it made me realize that I have to draw to communicate those ideas and then my drawings got better. And now actually I do, I do, large format illustration paintings. You know, I'm gonna have a gallery exhibit in a couple years. Once I get 20 of these done, it takes me to do one a year. It takes forever, I never have any free time. But if I hadn't have started drawing and had the inclination and, and, and taken, learn all these other things and kept at it, I wouldn't have the career I have now. So when I, when I say to you, please, 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 learn to communicate, get that foundation of visuals down by drawing and that's the main you know get a piece of paper and a pencil and that's how you're going to communicate 99% of the time in this industry so you know if you think oh I'm not going to ever draw computer animation the people who can draw are the people who are the top of the game in computer animation the people that don't know how to draw they never get past a certain point there are maybe one or two exceptions but on average those are the people so please learn it really yeah so even in those other uh, specializations within animation, Got it. where it be lighting or whatever, Got to communicate. still... Lighters, all they are, they're painters. Lighters go and they reference Degas and, and you know, all, all these, you know, uh, uh, you know, all these great painters. They go and they have so to... They also that. need to study some fine art or some art history, like be aware. All of it. Of color and all of those color things. Color design, you're an artist. You got to communicate oh, yes. visually. The, all the computer is is a tool. That's good to know, you know, because I'm always telling people that, but I am a hands-on artist. I am a painter, you know, and I teach life drawing and, and basic drawing. And, of course, I'm going to preach that, right? But sometimes young people say, yeah, but you're not an animator. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm going to use the computer. See how that turns so out for it. So it's yeah. good to hear from somebody, you know, that's in the field that, that knows that, yes, this is still important. And I'm seeing it so much in the design fields, too, that, like, in – interior design, architecture, landscape architecture, that a lot of these programs, like the schools, went more towards computer-aided um, design. And what they're finding now is that the, the profession is um, rather at a miss. And they're trying to bring back hand drawing and perspective training and all of this into the design programs now that they don't have the funding for it. So... <laughs> You know, and it's really a challenge. Like I had this one friend that's a landscape architect. I gave her only five drawing lessons. It's kind of on the fly. I've got this job and I need to draw this thing for my client. How do I do this? And so I would taught her a little bit at a time. And she actually tripled her income in one year. And she said it wasn't so much that she did a better job and she got a better client and then she had a better, better referral and all that. She said it changed how she thought. She could think in 3D now. And she said she designed better as a result. So, um, so it is. It's that. It's that language. And she was saying that for her, when she's designing, if she's using a computer program, she says she her designs are dependent on how proficient she is in that program, or 
the flexibility of that software program because um, she's just not at will to necessarily make it do anything that she could imagine where your hand, once you train it, can do anything you imagine the, in your mind. Yeah, and, and this is a stylus for a computer. And I just want everyone yes, to know. Yes, that's awesome new invention. <laughs> this, this is a tool. All a computer is is a digital pencil. 3D animation, it's just a digital pencil. If you don't understand how to draw on that foundation of design and communication, I can give anybody, I, I can go out and grab somebody who's not an artist and give them a 3D animation. Train them to design and they understand that motion, you design motion in the rule of thirds. You know, you have a fast motion and then you, you, you go for a slow motion and then a little fast motion, you know, and it all comes back down to those basic core fundamentals that you learn when you draw, when you have the three or four years of the foundational drawing. And, and, I, and I work with people early on because I, I was one of the first CG animators. And there wasn't enough classically trained people who also did CG. So is me, and I had this 2D background for four years. And there are other people that are coming right out of school, but they only had, you know, I was right out of school, but I had four years of, of 2D. And there are other people coming out of school, and they had just been trained in CG, and that's it. And what did you find? I found that they didn't understand how to graphically make something look appealing. They, they were thinking in 3D. I was thinking, I'm looking through a viewfinder that's flat at an object that is 3D, but I'm only seeing the two-dimensional image, and that's, that's how you think. So I was able to design, and I would, on Iron Giant was my first movie, and I would get, and people thought I was nuts, but I would take a, a dry erase marker, and I would draw the pose on my monitor, and then I would force the 3D to do that, and then I would draw my arcs out. I, I treated it exactly like 2D animation, and the ironic thing was that the director of the Iron Giant was Brad Bird, who's now gone off. He's a big Hollywood director. He personally selected me to do these major acting sequences in the movie that were originally for the, the head of uh, or the, the lead animator of the giant, Steve Markowski. He was supposed to do those shots. But Steve had his plate full of managing all these other artists and these other animators. So Steve and Brad called me into the office one day and I thought I was in trouble. I'm like, what did I do wrong? And they're like, hey, we're really impressed with your animation because you understand 2D and your, your, your work looks 2D. It doesn't look like 3D, it's all mushy. You're thinking timing, you're thinking arts, you're thinking graphically. And that, that's what we want. So we want to give you this sequence and I was like, you know, that single-handedly having that design background and really understanding how to make things graphical, that gave me a career. So when people are like, I don't want to learn how to draw, okay, don't do it. You know, you can listen to my advice or not. I, it doesn't hurt me at all. But if you really want to, you know, follow the success I've had, I've just given you a roadmap. And, you know, if you want more info, go to SuccessfulAnimator.com. Tons of free info, but, you know, don't... Don't think you're smarter than, than people who are doing it, and don't think that, that you don't need that advice. Go and get the advice, try it out. If you try it and it doesn't work, then you, know, you can do it your way. But you know, I, I always, even now, you know, I, I, I'm constantly learning, I'm constantly looking to the experts to teach me new things. Even within the realm of filmmaking and animation, you know, I'm, not, I'm not done learning. So you, you gotta be open to, to taking advice from people who are, you know, whether they're one step ahead of you or a mile ahead of you, seek them out, get those mentors and really find what's working. Because uh, the most valuable thing you have in your life is time. And it's so easy to let 10 years go by or, you know, a day go by or whatever and realize you just wasted your time. Think of every, every minute in your day as a million dollars. Would you waste a million dollars? No. Well, why are you wasting your time sitting on the couch? You know, I always tell people, go out and draw. I don't have any time. What did you do last night? Well, I watched... I played Sega, or I guess people play Nintendo and PlayStation, and then I watched, I watched Jersey Shore, and then I did, well, you know, you just wasted three hours last night when you could have been getting better. You know, the people who are the top of the industry, they're the people that all they do, it goes back to that passion, all they do is that thing that, the, that drives them, and that's why they're at the top. And everybody else is like, mm, I don't know. All right, you know, <laughs> so you gotta have that drive. <laughs> Yeah. And so it sounds like 
um, when a student is choosing a specialization or, or going into animation, that it sounds like it's a good idea to take classical animation um, before specializing into uh, computer. Yeah, you got to learn 2D. Like I said earlier, get Maya or get 3D Max. Get one of these, these 3D programs so that you can play around with it, but only let that be about 10% of your time. You just want to get it. You want to get comfortable enough that you you can start thinking in 3D, but then put it away and, and focus at least for those two years. Focus on 2D. Get that down. Why everybody else is like, ah, you know, playing around in 3D because the 3D doesn't help you get any better. The 3D, like I said, it's just a tool, right? If you have a pencil but you don't know how to draw, what are you going to do with that pencil? You're not going to do. You're just going to make junk with it. You're wasting your time. Learn how to draw, and then you can pick up a pencil, a paintbrush, a pen, a spray can, a stylus, a mouse, you know, anything you can do. And, and I, I can go from, from tool to tool, the software package to software package, and I'm good, I'm great in all of them because I have that foundation. Like, what, what do you think is the greatest contributing factor Passion. to your success. I knew what I wanted to right. do. I, I, you know, I was drawn on the walls when I was two years old. Ever since I was a little boy. I mean, since the beginning, people like, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to make movies. Done. You know, there's nothing else that could do. I was like, I want to make movies. That's it. And I, I never ever doubted that or, or done anything differently. And, and, and that's why I've, I've been able to have the success that I have. You know, I'm only, I'm only like half, not even halfway through my career. You know, I'm, I'm just getting revs up and, and I'm totally pumped to do it. So the number one takeaway that I hope people can get from this interview is, like I said in the very beginning, have that passion, have that goal. Because if you have that, you can have a million people say no to you and, you're, and you know you're not going to give up. You're going to say, okay, they said no. Why? And you're going to get input. What do I need to do to get better? And they're going to tell you. And you're going to say, thank you. You're not, instead of going, oh, screw you. Don't tell me to, you know, don't, don't not like my work. You're going to go, thank you for, for, for being honest and giving me feedback. And then you're going to take that feedback, grow and get better, show it again. And you know eventually that you're going to get that yes. And it's the one yes that you get that you're in the door, you're in the club, and then you're rocking. Yeah, yes, we did. Awesome. And what are the uh, biggest successes you've had that, that you just feel really proud of and excited about in your career you've had so far? I, I'm, I'm sort of impartial to all of it because I'm, I'm one of these people where it's, it, I don't look at the past. I'm like, I, I'm just excited about the next thing. You know, I'm like, I'm like a dog with short term memory. Like, oh, I did that. You know, and, and it's also the weird thing is when you work on a movie, you, you, you look at it and it's painful. You know, it's, it's like, oh, I should have done this instead of that. Like, you just see the mistakes. So I don't ever go back and watch the movies that I've worked on. It's just a weird experience, you know. But, okay. Well, I'm just curious for the students to well, know the, what the kind of things that, you've worked on. So the big thing where you're that everybody loves is I was one of the main Gollum animators on Lord of the Rings. So when you watch the second and third films, there's the monologue where Schmeagol's like, nah, you know, doing all that stuff. I did a lot of that animation. So that's the one that everybody loves. I also... Um, you know, I've got to work on some classic films like, uh, you know, I've worked on the Harry Potter franchise, the Fast and Furious franchise, uh, Iron Man. You know, I've, I've worked in some of the biggest characters of all time. And it, the funny thing is, if I, if I was a movie star, I would be, you know, I'd be the, I, I would have, I would have been like one of the main movie stars because I've, I've animated Mickey Mouse, I've animated Iron Man. You know, I've done all these major characters who, who are movie stars but you know we're animators we're the humble people behind the scenes but it's it's just fun because you get all those different experiences and you, you get a you're an actor and you get to play in all these different roles and, and, and that's just me as an animator but as a, as a just a graphic artist you know getting you know seeing that movie poster for Iron Man and everybody's like oh my god Iron Man they're all excited and you're like I I helped out on that you know I I, I made I made a little piece of that I did you know a little piece, but the, the thousands of people. But you know, it's still it's fun. It's it's cool when you walk down the street and there's some kid with an Iron Man T-shirt. You know, some little five-year-olds running around playing. You know, pretending to be Iron Man. And you're like, yeah. <laughs>